Meta is announcing it's dropping the price of its VR headsets. Hello and welcome to Wednesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. Finally, we have some good news in the VR space. So far, 2023 has been a little rough on the VR industry, but an entirely new meta roadmap has been released, or at least leaked, detailing their next four years of VR plans. And I'm honestly really excited. Plus, some really good Quest 3 news. Samsung and Apple are gearing up for the XR industry. Pimax is doing some wild stuff. And we got dozens of new VR games on the way. All that and so much more, we're in for a great week, so let's just get right into the news. Let's start off with some good stuff. Population 1 is going free to play. Well, sorta. Since its release, Pop 1 has probably been one of my favorite multiplayer VR games. It's essentially the Fortnite of VR. Starting March 9th, Population 1 will be completely free on the Quest Store. The Steam VR version, however, will still cost $20 also allotting users $20 worth of in-game currency. This is being done to quote-unquote prevent potential cheaters from easily making new accounts on Steam. But really, it's pretty much just copy-pasting the Gorilla Tag payment model, something I think we're going to see a lot more of, especially considering that Gorilla Tag has made $26 million in revenue off of just in-app purchases. All in all, pretty exciting. I know I'm going to give Population 1 another go now, and this should really bring in a lot of brand new players, and that was my only complaint with the game. So yeah, give it a shot if you're on Quest. And I'll just add one more exciting thing before we get into the meaty meta roadmap. VRChat has announced proper native eye tracking support. So if you have a headset that supports eye tracking, you can easily get data OSC inputs working. But more excitingly, the Quest Pro's eye tracking, at least in standalone mode, will work for the vast majority of avatars without doing anything. You'll just have eye tracking, which is an amazing step forward. It's still not perfect, and this is still a small step, but it's certainly certainly a welcome step forward. So speaking of Quest Pro and eye tracking, I think we should start this whole meta segment with one of the largest and quickest price drops I have ever seen in the history of tech. So the Quest Pro has dropped in price almost 33% from $1,500 to $999 just five months after its launch. So there are many ways to take in this information. On one side, ouch. This is kind of painful for someone like me that bought this headset day one, but early adopters almost always lose. So it's kind of whatever, it just comes with the territory. But then on the other side, this is very obvious evidence that the Quest Pro sold incredibly poorly, like worryingly bad. However, the Pro wasn't the only price drop. The Quest 2 also decreased in price, but honestly, unless you really want a Quest 2 now, or you just really want a good face and eye tracking headset, the Quest 2 and Pro just really aren't the best purchases right now, even after the price cuts. As more information on the Quest 3 and Meta's overall roadmap becomes clear, well, the future looks really exciting. And I'm just gonna start with Meta's statements on where VR is at right now for them, because it's a so realistic look at where we're really at right now. There's no sunshine and fluffy marketing here. Meta admitted that the retention on the Quest 2, or people that buy the headset and actually use it, is getting worse and worse. Mark Rabkin, Meta's VP of VR, stating, quote, we're on our third year of Quest 2, and sadly, the newer cohorts that are coming in, the people who bought it this last Christmas, they're just not as into it or as engaged as the ones who bought it early, and that Meta needs to be better at growth and retention and resurrection, end quote. And it was actually really nice to hear Meta admit that retention hasn't been amazing, and that there's a lot that they can improve on, which is exactly what this roadmap is all about, improving on where they're doing poorly. So first up on the roadmap is the Quest 3 later this year. And not gonna lie, I really wasn't all that excited about Quest 3 up until now. But I think I was misplaced on that judgment. Here's what Meta has to say about the Quest 3. Quote, we have to get enthusiasts fired up about it. We have to prove to people that all this power, all these new features are worth it. End quote. And well, considering the fact that Meta's retention is falling like a rock, their sales have really dropped, and competition is hot on their heels. 
levels, I think we have the perfect mixture of ingredients to see something amazing come out of meta. They have something to prove and market share to lose, which is a great place for innovations and it's a great place for consumers to be. So, Quest 3. Reportedly, it's half as bulky while being twice as powerful as the Quest 2, albeit for a slightly higher price. Which, if true, this is a bigger performance leap than the original Quest to the Quest 2. The other big selling feature, other than the comfort and power of course, is the mixed reality pass-through. Which, most of you are probably like, I don't really care about mixed reality, I want games. But, after using the Quest Pro a lot, I find myself using the headset way more often because of the pass-through. It just makes VR experiences easier to get into and easier to stay in. Not to mention the capabilities of mixed reality once they are actually used. And I came to these conclusions even with the Pro's pretty sucky pass-through. So, you can imagine that if the Quest 3 really makes pass-through and hand tracking fantastic, it likely will increase that retention. But the biggest deal here is that Meta apparently has 41 VR games to announce in just a few weeks after GDC. And that's probably the biggest VR news of this entire month, maybe of the whole year regarding Meta's ecosystem. We all know by this point that we can have the craziest, most insane hardware in the world. Shoot, that hardware could even be free. But if there's not a consistent stream of good software and games, well, headsets just start to collect dust. And that's bad for everyone in VR. So we don't know much about these 41 titles, and we're gonna have to wait a few weeks for that. But Meta's Roadmap does talk about their next hardware endeavors, Project Ventura. So Quest 3 is launching later this year, likely alongside a bunch of new games and software. Then next year in 2024, a Quest Lite seems to be on its way, codenamed Ventura. Essentially a headset that takes the best parts of Quest 3 and Quest 2 it seems, and slims it all down to be as cheap and mass consumer as possible. Maybe even down to the price of the original Quest 2, you know, 300 bucks, or even that Oculus Go's $200 price tag. But really not much is known on Ventura other than that. And if you're somebody that uses VR a lot, probably the Quest 3 is just gonna be the best for you. But Ventura seems like it'll be getting a lot of people in VR in the future. If it actually comes, of course, you know, we have to get through the next couple of years first. In terms of pro headsets though, obviously the poor sales of the first pro headset, it'll just be a while before Meta is back in that market. And it is sad to see face and eye tracking going away with it. But Meta did state that there will be another pro headset sometime in the future, but they talked about it in like four or five years. So there's actually a lot more to this roadmap. It was kind of a lot, but before we wrap it up, it's time for a meme break. I am so tired of people saying that Facebook's VR has worse tracking than Steam VR. Just look, Steam, we both have head tracking. We both have controller tracking. Oculus even has camera-based tracking. The Index has to use base stations. And yeah, of course, Steam has full body tracking, but who wants that? Look at all of the things that Oculus tracks better than Steam VR. Come on, you got location tracking, internet history tracking, best is tracking data? Come on, it even tracks your fears. Look, come on guys, stop saying that Meta's tracking is worse than Steam VR. Debate over. <laughs> okay, okay, now back to the news. So the rest of Meta's roadmap really doesn't have much to do with VR. Most of it has to do with AR, AI, and neural interfaces, which are all very, very interesting. And you'd probably be surprised to know that the VR section is smaller than the rest of the roadmap. But the Quest 3 and Project Ventura are the only things on the roadmap that are tangible within the next couple of years. Everything else is like 2025 to 2030, so long way away. And honestly, if I'm gonna cover the rest of that, it would probably need to be its own video, it's just really abstract, so let me know if you'd be interested in that. But now we can move on to something kind of funny. You may remember the whole Echo VR situation, you know, Meta just shutting down one of the most popular and loved games for, I don't know, weird reasons, which still makes me feel a little sus about these upcoming 41 games. Like these better be really good. But anyways, the Echo community has successfully pulled off one of the greatest VR protests of all time. They hired a plane to fly a banner over the Meta HQ with the banner begging Zuck not to kill Echo. Like last week we talked about it happening, but it actually happened. Unfortunately, however, it seems Meta employees were a little too busy wearing VR headsets attempting to boost the Horizon player count to notice because Echo is still on its way out with an email sent just yesterday to reconfirm. Interestingly enough though, Lemming, the developer of Gorilla Tag, someone that is much deeper connected with Echo than it may seem, even hiring some of the Echo team, said that they are working on some sort of spiritual successor to Echo to replace it. So at least there's that. Look, 
Either way, I just really hope that Meta and Ready at Dawn have something amazing to make up for taking down Echo, because it's going to take a masterpiece to replace a masterpiece, but I guess we'll have to see. Let's move on to good old Pimax, with some really good news actually. In case you've ever wondered how the heck Pimax keeps making these crazy VR headsets that sell to an incredibly small niche of consumers, and still stays afloat without going bankrupt, well it's because they've been getting a lot of pretty decent funding in China. Also, the company's headquarters. In 2020, they raised $20 million, and just this past week, Pimax closed another $30 million Series C funding round, led by Beijing-based Guanmu Capital, which I'm sorry if I butchered that. Total, Pimax has raised over $69 million, which makes their recent Crystal and Portal and weirdly missing 12KX make just a lot more sense. I think we all know that Pimax is a weird company, and they tend to often overpromise and underdeliver, but they are one of the the very few companies out there making wide field of view, high resolution, crazy VR headsets for hyper enthusiasts. So obviously I just want them to make the best product possible and this funding will definitely help with that. Another interesting move was a recent announcement that their upcoming game store will have a 100% revenue share, meaning they will make no money off of their game store. They say that this is sustainable because they're a hardware company first and they make money off their hardware, not their software. But the reason why we have cheap accessible hardware is often because it's subsidized with software sales. So uh, I don't know if this is really sustainable. $3,000 headsets with free revenue share for their games or a typical revenue share system and way cheaper headsets because you can subsidize everything. I don't know. But anyways, along with that is a $100,000 VR game creation stimulation fund. All of these are just very interesting moves and I guess we'll have to see how they pan out. But I'm still looking forward to getting a Crystal and 12KX in hands. There's kind of nothing else like it on the market. So we all know Google Samsung and Qualcomm have been hot at work on something XR related, and it seems that it may just be called Galaxy Glasses, which makes sense given that Samsung has just filed for a Galaxy Glasses trademark. It should also be noted that nothing VR from Samsung has been Galaxy branded before, so while this could be anything, it's likely posed as a direct competitor to whatever Apple has cooking. And I'll definitely be keeping my eyes on this trademark. Regarding Apple, there's really nothing new about their upcoming headset. Over the four years that I have covered VR stuff, every single year people say Apple's headset is coming and then it doesn't, but this year, according to everyone, seems likely. And I kind of have to agree if it's going to come out, it's going to come out this year or next year, or it's just not going to come out at all for like another decade. But either way, even mainstream media is pretty hyped about it, so we'll have to see. Right now, rumors are some 8K display headset priced at $3,000 with a cheaper, more consumer-friendly headset coming in 2024 or 2025. But okay, guys, now I really want to talk about something that's close to me. I know I've mentioned that my Twitch streams would be coming back soon, and I didn't really give a specific date, but today is that day. My streams are like a true extension of everything I do in VR, and it allows me to literally talk directly with you guys openly about VR and try games and answer questions. And so I just want to announce that today is the day Thrillawoo is back on Twitch. So come on by the Twitch stream. We're going to be celebrating and having a good time just chatting about everything and anything VR. It's always a blast, and streams should be going on every week after this, if not more often. So this week, if you have a question of the week, just either leave it down below or hop on the stream and say hey and ask it there. Otherwise, I want to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. So don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.